Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Bob Ross, Arts of Chill Game, a game that I feel I should just slide over in front of me like this, but maybe not. I did not know that Bob Ross was a thing. This game is for two to four players, ages 12 and up or so, plays in about 30 minutes. It's credited to Prospero Hall, which I believe is a pseudonym for Force Prison Creative which is credited with instructions published by Big G Creative. This is a title that will be available exclusively through Target starting in October 2017. I did not know that Bob Ross was a thing, right? I pulled this, my, my wife sent me a picture of this and she just wrote WTF. She's like, this arrived when I was not at home. She's like, what is this? But apparently he's still a thing. I played it with a friend of mine and she said, oh, I just started watching him a, a couple of weeks ago on this, some streaming channel. I don't know what it is and I'm like, didn't, didn't he die? Isn't he dead? She's like, I don't know. I'm just watching him. Okay. Well, yes, he died back in 1995. He was the host of a show, The Joy of Painting, which was on PBS, which I saw a couple of episodes way back when. And it was all about the joy of painting. It tried to encourage you to paint and show you painting techniques and do all sorts of things. Had a, a big fan base, but I did not know it was big enough to be nostalgic about but apparently it is. And now let's look at how this game works. Here are the components in Bob Ross' Art of Chill game, or at least most of the components. You have a stack of paintings from Mr. Ross, which are double-sided, which have some features on them I'll explain in a moment. Each player will have a palette on which you will place three markers. You have a die, a mover, a deck of art supply cards, of which you lay out four at the start of the game. And you also have a deck of technique cards, which you also lay out for. And the art supply cards show one of seven paints and one of four tools. If you need a reference for the paints and tools, you can look inside the box, which has all of them depicted here. Each person has a marker, which starts on the zero space, and you are trying to achieve maximum chill by getting to the end of the track here. And you will do that by painting. That is what Bob did, and that is what you will do as well. Each player starts with three art supply cards in hand, and normally they're not visible, but I'll leave them face up here so that you can see what I have to work with. On a turn, you first roll the die. You will likely get a bob head because there are three of them on the six sides of the dice. The first thing you do is turn over a chill card, which gives some sort of instruction or special rule for the round, usually. So when this is revealed, everyone draws an extra art supply card. More to work with. And Bob advances on the track. Now, Bob is working on this painting, and so are you. Each painting will have three of five possible features. In this case, a charming cabin, almighty mountains, and the wondrous water. You can pretty much you know, use any painting here. But you will pick them out, and now you'll paint along with Bob. He's advancing on the track, and when he gets to the end, the final feature there, the cabin in this case, then he will be done with the painting, and so will you. You will then throw this aside and choose another painting. Ideally, you are not working on something when that happens. So after you roll the die, you're going to take three actions, and here is one shortcoming of the game in that you should have a player aid card in here. There are six possible actions in the game and it will take you a little bit to remember what they are. So you'll need this rule book open to you. <laughs> Things that you can do are take a, an art supply card, whether face up or from the top of the deck and add it to your hand. That's one possible action. Two possible, a uh, second possible action is to play two cards from your hand that feature the same tool or paint that is depicted on a technique card and discard those and take the technique card, which will give you two immediate points. And anytime you complete something that features a one inch brush later in the game, you will get a bonus point. Okay, you have learned something with your technique. That's the second possible action. Third possible action is to paint something. So you take a card in your hand and you lay it down on one half of your palette. You have a two-sided palette, A and B. You can put up to three paints on a side of a palette. And what you are trying to do is eventually get cards down that match some elements of the painting that Bob is working on. So if I play a brown, I play a red, after that, as another action, I can complete that part of the painting. I can put down the brush to go with the brown, the red, 
the brush here, and I achieve points. You score points equal to the number of paints used, that's two. You score bonus points if you have completed that feature before Bob does. Well, Cabin does not have any bonus points because it's easy, there's only two paints there. If you are the first one to do a particular feature, then you score two bonus points. And next player will score one, and then after that, there's no bonus. And then you clear your palette. Okay. Another possibility is to just clear a palette. If you're working on something, and a new painting comes along that doesn't need those features, mm, I can do brown and red there. I can do brown and red there. Oh, there's lots of brown and red. Maybe this is not so hard. <gasps> no brown and red. Okay. If I cannot use that, I would have to spend an action to clear my palette. You can spend an action to clear away the four art supply cards and turn up new ones. There you go. Possibilities that you can do. Other actions on the die. You may have a card symbol, which means draw an art supply card, a palette, which paint, add paint to the palette if you want. You may have a hand, which means takes four actions on a turn. Other possible chill cards, maybe you get bonus points when you use a particular paint or feature, when you take a technique card, take an extra action on a turn, and do not move. Bob does, Bob's just chilling. Just leave him where he is. Okay. So you'll continue painting things, and a painting is finished when Bob reaches the end of the track, or when one player has completed all three features on a card. In that case, you throw aside the painting, you turn over a new painting, and continue the game. And you keep taking turns until someone reaches maximum chill. And everyone says, cool. And there's an overview of Bob Ross' Art of Chill game, which I played four times now on a review copy from Big G Creative with two and three players. What's funny is the Bob, the Bob Ross thing is, is there to attract an audience. I, I mean, that's clear. I played it with a different person who immediately had to text his wife a picture, the, the front of the box. He's like, oh man, she loves him. She's like, oh, I gotta send it right away, oh. And I'm like, oh, you can't publicize that yet. Oh, oh let me follow that up, she's gonna post it on Facebook. Okay, it, it, they're fans for Bob Ross, and that is, what, is what, what's gonna get a lot of people to pick up this game. Now what's funny is, this is actually a decent painting game, right? It, the Bob Ross is there as the hook to get people to pick it up to begin with, but if you discarded a lot of the Bob Ross things, and you weren't painting charming cabins, or you were painting something else, and you didn't have the Bob Chill cards, it would still all work, but it's, it's all of a package that's being put together. Everything works because it's a nicely designed game. You are trying to race to chill, which is an odd concept to pair those two, but that's how it works in the game. You're trying to beat Bob to certain features so that you can get bonus points. You're trying to beat other players to certain features so that you get bonus points. And you're trying to pick up technique cards because that'll give you more points in the game in addition to two points immediately. But of course you have to throw away the things in order to get the techniques. I just threw away two cadmium yellow so now I cannot paint cadmium yellow for a little while unless I get some more. But other people might be taking that just so I don't get to do it. A little interaction there as you're trying to race to get things done and of course beat Bob to the end of the track. You don't want to be stuck wasting actions by washing your palettes, which in four games, no one has done yet. There are joker cards in the game, which can be any color, but not any tool. The tool cards, you need this, the dual-sided cards. But the jokers, they cost two to pick up, a la joker and ticket to ride. But they're super useful, you just sort of see the palette if you know that the round is ending and you're getting set for the next round. Although, I'll mention in the three-player games, we never went beyond two paintings. and in the two player games, we didn't go beyond two paintings either because you're actually scoring more points because you more often end by you or by someone completing three features. With three players, there's more die rolls, so Bob's racing along a little bit more. With four players, obviously that's gonna happen even more. Bob's a quick little mover there across the track. So we're gonna have to work to complete things before him. He's chill, but not chill. Intense, but not tense. There you go. An overview of the Bob Ross game. It's very nicely designed, and to have this staring at you from, from your game shelf is kind of interesting. 
disturbing. I'm not sure what to think of it.